Hello, and thank you for spending a few minutes with us today, as I will be teaching you how to use Rosie Connect 2.0. My name is Mary Jackson, and I am the key training specialist at the Nurse Rosie headquarters, located here in the heart of Savannah, Georgia. Today, as we move through each step of how to use Rosie Connect 2.0, it will be very important that you have one of the carts with a tablet affixed to the front right beside you during the training. This session is also designed with areas for pause, which will make it easy for you to pause the video and practice the steps that we talk about. So if you have your cart beside you now, then let's get started. If not, just pause the video here so you can get your cart, then we can begin. Okay, great, let's begin. First, I will show you how to power on the Vital Signs Monitor as well as the Rosie Connect 2.0 tablet. Let's do the Vital Signs Monitor first. For today's demonstration purposes, we are using the Rosebud BC Vital Signs Monitor. If you're using the Rosie 4 Vital Signs Monitor, the process is very similar. As you can see, my finger is right over the button that has the on-off indicator. If the power switch is not lit at all, it's completely off. Now I'm going to firmly press the button. After I press the button just once, it will take the monitor a few seconds to completely turn on and go through the self checks. On the monitor, if the light is green, it is on. If it's in a yellow, it's in sleep mode. At this point, there are two ways to wake it up. You can tap once on the power switch or you can lift the oral thermometer out of the well to wake it up. Let me tell you about the other buttons on the monitor. The other buttons are C, which you must press after taking each resident's vitals to clear their data. Next is this one, which we don't wanna use. If you do hit this by mistake, just give us a quick call at Nurse Rosie Support and we will walk you through a quick fix. Finally, this last button starts the blood pressure cuff. Now let's pause so that you can turn on your vital signs monitor as well. Very good. Now that you have turned on your vital signs monitor, let's get your Rosy Connect tablet up and running. The power button is located on the left side of the tablet. You will need to turn your tablet around so you can locate the small power button at the top. I am pointing at it now, and when I'm ready to turn on the tablet, I will need to hold this button down until the tablet kicks in and begins to power up. The Rosie Connect graphics on the screen signal that the tablet is going through the power setup sequence. It usually takes a minute or so. Once you see the time, immediately swipe up from the lock icon to unlock the screen. So as you can see, it's very easy to do. Now I want you to pause this video and turn on your Rosie Connect tablet. See you in a minute. Now, before we go any further, I wanna mention a couple points about the tablet in sleep mode. If the tablet is dark, to find out if it's in sleep mode, simply tap the power button once. Don't hold the button down too long, just tap. If the time, then shows on the screen it's awake. Remember, once you see the time, you need to immediately swipe up so that it brings the tablet to the login screen, which looks like this. Now, if your login screen does not appear and instead it looks like this, this means you don't have an internet connection. I am going to show you how to connect to your facility's Wi-Fi on the tablet. You take your finger and you swipe down here you will see a Wi-Fi connection icon. Touch it and then select your Wi-Fi. Then swipe up or touch to close the window. If you're not sure which network to choose or if you're having Wi-Fi password difficulties, please contact your IT department. When you successfully connect to Wi-Fi, you will then see the login screen. You may need to also refresh your tablet by selecting the X on the top left corner. In addition to this, I would like to point out two very important cables that you need to always make sure are properly connected. 
This is a power cord. This is a cable that connects to the tablet to your monitor. There is never a time that you will need to remove these cables for any reason. But as a user, you never really know what the person before you might have done. So I always, always do a visual check to make sure my cables are fully plugged in. If not, then the tablet will not be able to talk to the vital signs monitor. Please stay tuned to the end of the video for some other important troubleshooting tips and tricks. Okay, let's get ready to talk about the next steps. Remember now, if at any time you need to pause the video to practice, please do so. Every small step that we take with the training is important for the next step. If we rush through a step and you are not completely comfortable with it, then you will not be able to use the system with as much comfort moving forward. Whenever you first turn on the vital signs monitor and the tablet, they will go through a few steps to initialize and then you will see the login screen. When you get to this screen, you will need to have your EHR user ID and password. We will not be able to proceed with getting you logged into the system without your user ID and your password. At this time, we will wake the system up if needed and log in. I am going to enter my username and password, and now I'd like for you to pause the video and log in on your end. Okay, now that you are logged in, the first thing you will see are your residents. They are in no certain order. At the bottom of the page, you will see the total number of residents. This count is current, in real time, and reflects any discharges and admissions. If you do not see your resident that you need to take vitals on, then you will select Find a Patient. You will then put the first three letters of their first or last name, and it will bring up the search results. I am here with my resident, Don Robbins. So in order to find Ms. Robbins, I enter R-O-B and select search. My search results come up and I can scroll to find her if I don't immediately see her. At this point, I find and select Dawn Robbins so that her patient data page comes up. I am now ready to begin taking her vitals. Let's pause here so that you can find and select a resident and bring up his or her patient data page. So I'm back with Ms. Robbins, and I'm going to begin collecting her vitals. Hi Dawn, is it okay that I take your vitals? Yes. I connect the blood pressure cuff and press start on the monitor. I connect the SpO2 sensor. And I prepared to take an oral temperature. I want to mention here that if the resident is unable to take an oral temperature, you can take a tympanic measurement, which I will show you later in this video. Okay, now let's go up to the vital signs monitor. Now all the vitals are being taken simultaneously. Down on the tablet, you will select blood pressure icon, and you will see the dialog box come up. If this occurs, select OK to proceed. Now you are on the take vital screen. As the blood pressure, the SpO2, and oral temperature are being taken, you can begin to select criteria for your resident's electronic health record. For the blood pressure, you will indicate whether they are sitting, standing, or lying, which arm, and select cuff size. Then you're going to select the side you are using again. For heart rate, there are options. For temperature, it should always be oral for this system. For SpO2, you're going to select finger, and you will select the side that you use for measurement. At the bottom, you select whether they are using room air, oxygen, etc. 
If you need to document respiration, it's manual. You select the box under respiration. It brings up a number pad. You enter the number manually and press done. At this point, you're ready to get all of your data to pull from the monitor to the tablet. Select get data. Once you've selected it, it brings all the information down from the monitor to the tablet. If the resident's clinical data is within the correct parameters, you will select save data. If not, there is a retake option. Simply retake the vitals and then select save data. There will be a box that pops up that asks if you wish to save the data. You can select yes to close out of the resident and it will automatically return to the resident's all patient screen. Or you can select no and return to the specific resident's take vitals page to retake the vitals. That's it for now for my resident's vitals data. Thank you, Dawn. Now remember, I explained at the beginning that when moving from one resident to the next, you must press C on the vitals monitor to clear the data before moving to the next resident. Before we pause to let you take a resident's vitals, I want to show you a couple of features of the resident's patient data page. It will show you the date and time stamps of any of the latest patient's vitals that have been taken and recorded in the EHR. This is so helpful because it gives you something to reference when you're taking the next set of vitals for the resident. Now that you have seen how to get patient's vitals data from the monitor to the tablet to the resident's EHR, you are ready to take a resident's vitals. Let's pause here so that you can take your resident's vitals and save them. See how quick and easy that was? Now I mentioned earlier that we would show you how to handle residents who are not able to take an oral temperature. So we will use a tympanic thermometer instead. Our tympanic device is Bluetooth, which is wireless. So you will need to pair the device to the tablet. Pairing just means that we have to set up the tablet so that it recognizes the data from the wireless device. You should not need to pair the device very often, but sometimes if everything powers off, you may need to do the pairing again. First thing we need to do from the all patient screen is find the three dashes on the upper left hand side. Touch that and it will open a menu. Select devices. You'll take your tympanic thermometer and turn it on by pressing the button on the belly. If you see numbers, it's on. To pair the device, put a probe cover on, put it in your ear, tap the button on the back of the device, then, then select scan on the tablet. It will find the Fora IR20. Pop off your probe cover and put the tympatic back in the cradle. Return to the upper left of the screen and hit the home and then home. This brings you back to the resident all patient screen. Now let's pause so you can pair your tympanic thermometer to your tablet. As I mentioned, you will probably not need to pair your Bluetooth devices very often, but now you're familiar with the process. Now to take and document a tympanic temp, we are back with our resident Dawn Robbins. So we will need to select, find a patient, select ROB, and hit the search. Then we'll we need to select Ms. Robbins again from the All Patients page to get back to the resident's patient data. At this point, you're going to select the tympanic temp icon. You're now ready to remove the tympanic from the cradle and turn it on. Once you put the probe cover on, the ear will appear. The default reading is an ear temperature. If this is what you want, the device is ready. If you prefer an oral equivalent, press the button on the belly once and you will see the ear switch to a smiley face. 
If you change your mind and want the ear, you will need to turn the device off, then on, and start over. Once you've selected your ear or smiley face, you're ready to take a tympanic temp. I'll do it now. Wait to hear a beep or see the screen on the tympanic turn green. If it turns red, that means the resident's temperature is above normal. Now on the tablet, select Get Data, and it brings the temperature from the device to the tablet. Then you hit Save Data, and it'll ask you if you're sure you want to save data, and you say yes. We're going to take a break here so you can take the resident's temperature using a tympanic thermometer. Next, I'm going to show you how to use the Rosie Smart Meter Glucometer. For purposes of this video, we are assuming that you have already run your controls, taken your resident's blood sample, and ejected the strip. So then on the tablet, we're going to find a resident. Select the correct resident, select the glucose icon, we're going to select the correct option before meal or after meal. Then hold the rosy smart meter face down directly on the NFC on the front of the tablet. Hold it there until you see numbers populate on the tablet. Once your numbers are in, save data and verify that you want to save the data. Now I'm going to show you a few helpful tips and tricks. First thing is getting to know your status bar. In the upper right hand corner, you can see the icons representing the Bluetooth. If it's not there, then your tablet's Bluetooth is not turned on. Wi-Fi connection. If you don't see the cone, you don't have Wi-Fi. And battery life. If it's low, you need to plug in and recharge. Remember, when your card is not being used, it should be plugged in somewhere using the white cord. Finally, the time of day on this is on the status bar. If you ever notice that the time on the tablet does not match your time on your vital monitor, please give Nurse Rosie a quick call. Now let's talk about getting yourself out of a jam. Let's say you're in Miss Robin's room taking her temperature. You select Get Data. Then you realize you're on the Take Vitals page of Miss Roby. But it should really be Miss Robbins. Don't panic, as long as you have not verified and saved the data, it's not too late to get the vitals data to the correct residence EHR. So to fix this, select the arrow on the bottom of the screen, find the resident that you need, select the temp. Select Get Data, and it will bring it into the correct patient. And then you can save data and say yes to save data. Now I'd like to share some tips for care and maintenance of your Rosie Connect equipment and devices. For your cuff, for example, make sure when you're releasing it, you use the spring release. That's to change it from your small, medium, and large cuffs. If you pull on it, it's going to disconnect the tubing here and you will not get a good blood pressure reading. As for your sensors, make sure you do have a light inside. If you do not have one in there, you've got a bad sensor, so you'll want to replace that. A couple of other things that attach to both the cuff, hose, or the cuff and the sensor are the hoses. You want to make sure that these are always intact and in good condition. That goes for this extension cable too. For your thermometer, you want to make sure it's never frayed around the edges. If you get bad readings, you'll want to pull out the well, check to see if there's a probe cover in. If it is, simply push it out, 
put this back in, and you're able to use your thermometer again. For your tympanic, it is driven by batteries. So you want to make sure you always have fresh batteries in here and you always get a good reading. One other thing is make sure you keep your lens cleaned off. Uh, periodically take an alcohol prep pad and wipe off your lens. That goes with any of the devices we have here. You can take an alcohol prep pad or a Clorox wipe and keep it sanitized. If you have any other questions or you need help, call Rosie Support. Thank you so much for joining me to learn how to use Rosie Connect 2.0. If you ever need help, please don't hesitate to contact us. Our Rosie support team is available for equipment and device troubleshooting, 8.30 to 5 Eastern, Monday through Friday. And our Rosie Connect 2.0 platform technical support is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. On behalf of the Nurse Rosie team, we thank you for being a customer.